Okay, this will be the last time I talk about tires. <clears throat> but I'm tired of riding on this tire. I've been trying to kill it off. I'll insert a quick little video here from um, a ride I just did on this tire. See how well it, it still hooks up, even though theoretically this thing shouldn't do anything. It's great on the road. It's got this nice custom-formed <coughs> pitch to the road on it. But um, anyway, I was going to show you how this tubo system works. So in the meantime, I'm going to kill this tire off. So I'm going to take my Valerium steel drill bit here, and I'm going to completely ruin this tire, I think. There we go. Right through that sucker. And if my guess is correct, totally ruined. I've killed it. I'm going to put my helmet on. Let's go for a ride. Okay, so this is the tire I just drilled through. I'm doing 50 miles an hour. I'm not going to go. <laughs> I'm not going to lean into this corner. But imagine you're out in the woods, you get a catastrophic flat tire. You can still ride this thing home. Borrow this guy's driveway for a second. So you can tell I'm not down on the uh, on the rim. This tire is so stiff. Of course, the holes I drilled are probably on the bottom side somewhere. It feels like there's a flat tire on it, but uh, like I said, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you punch four three eighths inch holes through your tire, you can still ride home. Pretty cool. Okay, I've made my point. Next we'll go back and I'll take this tire apart and show you uh, the insides and how this thing works. Okay, so let's walk through this. So I've already taken the tire off the bike obviously and I've already broken it down. So normally you would take your tire, get it outside the rim, pull the tube out, and get the other side off. On this system here, you're actually going to get the tire on the outside of the rim on both sides so the entire rim is sitting in the tire and I should be able to pull this thing out of here without too much of an effort some effort come on baby okay so that's our well Trail. Here's the issue. So this system was designed for um, you know 450, 250, with a rim width of 2.18 inches. That's the standard rim width. The 690 KTM's, the 701's, it's at 2.5. So the difference being 0.33 of an inch, 0.35 of an inch, which correlates to about seven or eight millimeters wider than what this system was designed to to do. So, um, underneath this red tube, if you will, you've got a, it's almost like a bicycle tube, but it's heavy duty. 
and this is their special tape that you wrap the rim with. So anyway, you've got an inner tube inside of this guy here. And I could just take a tire iron and just pop this whole thing right over the rim. Okay, and then to get air into the tire chamber, it's one valve and then the other valve right here obviously fills up the inner tube on the inside. So, let me do this quickly. This is... Okay. Air this guy up. So this will take a couple seconds here to get the full 125 in there. Literally like a pinhole uh, size orifice. Okay, so you can tell this guy is swollen up now. It's inflated and it's reasonably well centered in the rim. And if I take my handy dandy. So what we're looking at is we need to fill. So imagine your tire, right? It's gonna go down in here. And then when this thing swells up, it's gonna pinch your 125 pound bladder right up against the bead of the tire, which on the other side is gonna get pressed into the rim. So you basically got a rim lock, that's the entire circumference. And we're looking at about 7.69 millimeters that we need to fill, plus some tension. I've got a little bit of a leak on this hose, so I'll shut this thing off. But that's full, that's, that's as big as that thing is gonna expand. Now, at seven millimeters here, looking at some uh, tires, I had an old Shinko in the back, 10.5. That might actually seal up um, a Mifo, only six and a half. So that's six and a half, and we need to go. We got a 7.6 to fill. That tire would just slide right in there. I mean, it wouldn't even it wouldn't even touch. Uh, IRC 7.3, 7.6, same thing. Not even going to touch. TKC, the um, tire that originally came with the bike, 9.5 millimeter. I tried. Uh, with that tire and it's kind of like it would almost seal and then there were some places where the air would escape so no go on that and then you've got the Maxxis so it's 11.5 millimeters thick so what we're talking about is the thickness of this wall alright so this tire is hugely thick so we got 11 and a half millimeter bead thickness and we got a seven and a half millimeter space to fill so not only are we going to fill it but we're also going to have enough room for this thing to press out and lock that tire in and that's why this is the only tire I mean if, if you if you had a job I guess in a motorcycle tire warehouse you could run around and measure all the, the thicknesses um, but you really need to be at least probably 11 millimeters and then anything thicker than that uh, will be a definite lock I certainly had no issues whatsoever now you saw the uh, hole that I drilled through the tire I did it high because I didn't want to nick <laughs> Uh, this guy here. So in order for this system to fail, you have to lose the air on the inner tube that's in here. So you've got this thick rubber housing here. You've got a super heavy duty inner tube in there. So whatever is going to cause this thing to fail, it's going to have to go through your tire, through this, and still puncture the inner tube. And of course, if the tire were to go completely flat, you're really not going to be riding on the rim. You're still riding on the tubeless system here through the thickness of the tire. So, incredibly impressed with this system. The fact that I could take this bald tire, and I'll insert some videos here and show some trails that I was on. I mean, it just doesn't make sense down low. I mean, this was a great street tire like this, obviously. Uh, and then on the trails, as long as I didn't whoop it up uh, with a throttle too much, it would hook up. So if you're crawling over rocks, working your way through some technical stuff, you, you'd had no idea you are on a bald tire. If anything else, having all this surface area worked to your advantage. And then, of course, when you get into the, uh, the softer, loamy stuff, that's when it's nice to have some knobs. And even on the gravel roads, anything approaching half throttle with a no-tire situation, even though this thing is f spread out, low, low pressure in there, but it's just, it's just beyond belief that that thing even worked at all as well as it did, considering it had no knobby action. So to put this thing on, it's just reverse what I just did. You're going to put the whole wheel inside. Now, it comes with this little plate. So it's got, this is just tired of it sitting outside in the back. So this guy would just grab the bead on this side. So as you take the whole rim and you put it in here, it's basically just a guide to keep the, the rim from popping out the back side. Now the issue you've got with the wider tire is that that piece of metal barely even fits on there as it is. 
So I had to take uh, another one, spread it way open, make some little tabs for it to sit on so that I could actually get it over the bead of this tire. So I'll go ahead and put this thing back on here. It's, um, it's no more difficult than, than uh, doing a normal tire change, really. So, uh, but I love it. Works really, really well. So there you've got it. Um, I've let the air pressure out of this thing now so it's nice and soft. So when I go to mount this tire, there'll be plenty of room for that bead to seat down in here. And then once, once the tire's on and everything, you, uh, this is part of the um, rim lock too, if you will. So standard nut on here on the end of this guy, you'll crank this down. And that's going to push this down. It's going to help grab the tire bead right there as well. Again, this hole is the, the pass-through to the valve stem to get air into the actual chamber of the tire once it's all on here. So, series of events. The tire goes in, tire, tire irons put the tire inside the rim here so it's going to seat properly. <coughs> Tighten this guy down. It's going to put pressure down that way. You're going to put 125 pounds of air in here. That's going to lock the tire rim up against the wheel rim, bead against the rim, lock that guy tight, and then I'm going to put four pounds of air into here and that's going to be the actual pressure of the tire and I'm sure because this tire is 11 and a half millimeters thick that's why it is so strong and uh, probably why I hated using this tire on my KX because I put you know 12 14 pounds in there and I was just bouncing off stuff it was horrible but um, with this system here the four pounds the street the trail everywhere else it just works spectacularly Okay, that didn't take but a minute to get the rim inside the tire. You can see it's inside the tire now on both sides. So now what I'm going to do is center things up and then just put the bead under the rim both sides the way you would normally do at this point. Well, actually normally one side would already be on the inside. You just have to do the one. So <clears throat> we'll go ahead and do that next and almost done. Okay, so you can see I've got the bead inside the rim on this side. And so now I'll just go around and get the bead under the rim on the other side. Okay, so I've got the uh, the tire on, and we'll go ahead and hook up our air. Make sure you get the right. Valve stem. Okay, that's down all the way, that's open. And the action of that inner tube, you can, you can see this guy's popping up. It's, it's gonna push the tire out just like you're putting air in the tire to seat the bead properly. Which it has done, good. It's all the same distance. It's always a struggle to read that gauge. So that's just about there. Okay, I'm there. So there's my 125 pounds. I'll shut that guy off there. Nice thing with this uh, shock tool, it's a good nominal way to hardly lose any air pressure out of the inner tube. So the last thing that I do, let me go, let me go find it, I set it down somewhere. But I use those pressure caps that turn colors when they, uh, at, at the right level. So I have the caps that are rated for 130 pounds. And when it gets to 120, it's going to go from green to red, start to. So they say in the directions for this thing is to always, you know, check your tire before you go. Well, we're dealing with such a small inner tube, a small volume of air. You put a gauge on there and you're going to lose 15, 20 pounds every time you do that. So with those pressure caps, you simply uh, just take a glance at it before you go. And if it's still green, you know everything is solid right where it needs to be. So that being done, I'll just go ahead now and I'm going to tighten down the rim lock. We'll pull that down all the way and then I'll put in my four pounds of air and I am good to go. Okay, so there you've got it. We're all done, ready to ride. 
And the only thing that I never mentioned along the way is that the tubeless system and even this tire, neither are DOT approved. So if that's a concern for you to have a DOT approved uh, system on the bike, scratch this one off your list. That's my disclaimer.